Hi, this is Kara, and this is DIY on the house. Hopefully you have caught on to the weaving craze that we have going on on DIY. We have videos that show you how to make rug looms, how to weave rugs, how to weave table runners, pot holders, even the loom for the pot holder. So we have a gamut of weaving options for you, but today I am going to fill a void of a rug that I've been wanting to do for a long time. Today I am going to take the plush, really soft blankets that you typically uh, see at Christmas time and in that white elephant game. I am going to take plush blankets, cut them into the weaving strips, and make a soft plush rug. So we're doing a little bit different camera angle. I'm, I'm sitting down on the floor. I actually have a sheet down that I'm sitting on because this is very messy. And so I thought while I'm working on this project, it would be a good idea to keep a sheet under you at all times. But um, we're going to use three different uh, kinds of strips. We have a texture teal, a standard teal, and a gray. I'm going to do the warp uh, on the, the loom and uh, we'll show you step by step how you can make a plush rug. The materials uh, that I'm gonna use for this rug, I am going to use a loom that Ross built me and the link on how to build this loom is down below. Uh, this loom is approximately 17 inches by 32 inches. The crazy cool thing about these looms is you use a steel rod uh, in the eyelets on the side and that will keep your rug square. So you'll need the loom, has nails on the end that are gapped about a half inch a piece. You'll need strips of fabric that are cut an inch and a half ish wide. Don't be uh, too worried about the particulars, but roughly an inch and a half wide. On my other video of how I uh, use sheets and fabric and clothing to weave rugs, you can rip those strips you cannot rip these blankets. So use a rotary cutter or scissors and cut them approximately inch and a half wide. You'll need a pair of scissors and then you're going to need some uh, string or you can use cotton fabric. I'm gonna opt for string to do your warp strings on your loom. So what happens is you will weave and I'm gonna show you step by step, but you weave back and forth the, the warp fabric that you weave between. I am opting to do the thick uh, cotton yarn because I am anticipating this to be a little bit bulky and I wanted to be able to see the, the softness and the texture of this. I didn't want this fabric to overpower it. So we are going to use cotton string for the warp. So I'm gonna get set up, change the camera angle and we'll get started. For the warp, uh, like I said, I'm going to use uh, the thick cotton yarn of a popular brand of this is like the Sugars and Cream uh, or the something Lily, but it's just the nice thick uh, cotton thread. If you have two separate pieces, at this point, you're gonna want to tie them together by making a good three inch loop at the end of your string but mine is uh, already together. I've made two separate balls, so I am going to just loop this over the first knot. If you, again, if you are um, tying two together, loop your loop that you've created, put it over the first nail, and now just go back and forth with two strands at a time, pulling it pretty tight, nothing crazy, but nice and tight and you just go back and forth to each nail across your loom. And again, I'm doing two strands at a time and that is because I just wanna make sure there's enough structure for the rug, but I didn't want the bulkiness of fabric taking away from the plush fabric. So I'm just gonna continue this.
Okay, I finished putting the warp on and I'm gonna just give it one last tight tug and make sure I didn't miss any nails. I have missed in the past and um, it's always good to double check. So at this point, I'm going to cut my string with a good 12, 14 inch tail. Get the balls tucked under there. My last nail came off, there we go. So now I'm down here. I am going to just make a, a nice three or four inch loop, just like you did at the beginning uh, to start. I'm not super good at knots, so I'm gonna take that off and just tie a loop this way. You would think with all the crocheting that I do, but my knot always slips. So I'm going to just make a loop and slip that over. So there you have your warp. Nice, everything's nice and tight. And so now I'm going to show you how we can start weaving it. Okay, I have the camera set up a little differently than I have um, in past videos. This one I wanted you to get the actual angle of how I sit and do the rugs. So at this point, I have it just leaning up on a chair. And as I weave down, I usually set this up on a milk crate or another chair so that my work area is in front of me. At this point, you slip in your steel rods. These are the secret to getting a nice square rug. These are eighth inch steel rods. We find them in the fastener department at the hardware store. So you can just ask the uh, clerk for eighth inch steel rods. So those will sit in there. What you do is we weave across, we weave around the rod and back, weave around the rod and back, and that will keep your sides nice and straight. I have a handful of the strips cut. And as I said, an inch and a half is your goal. But as you can see, um, this one here is uh, narrower than uh, that one. That doesn't matter. There's even a chunk out of there. Just So just as long as it's a, a strip that you are able to weave with. I am gonna start with one color and then I will show you how we add. When I start with just one color, I make the ends offset. I don't want them to stop and start at the same place all the way across your project. So I am going to go under the rod and that looks pretty good. That's where we're going to start. So this first one is a little slower than a one, uh, weaving because you have to get in between each of your strings. I'm going to fold over. I would like this color to be shown all the time. It wouldn't be horrible if that shows, but this is the nice soft uh, side of the fabric. So I'm going to go between the string straight below the nail. So basically put your finger below the nail and split that gap, and that's how where the back string comes forward. In that same exact gap, your front string goes back. And so now we're on the second string. Put your finger right below the nail, spread open the string. That string that's on the back is gonna come forward now. This is the one that's on the front. I'm gonna put it in the same exact hole and it's gonna go to the back. Now I have one in the back here. Here's the one that's in the back. Split this string, split the warp right below the nail. So just divide it, bring that one forward. Same exact hole. You have this one on the front, put it to the back. And I can already see I am going to love, oh my word, I'm going to love this uh, fabric. Okay, so there's a, um, the piece on the back. Split your warp, bring it forward. Take that same one on the front and put it in the same hole. We're going, just gonna go continue across the same pattern. I have split this and I'm gonna go back. Now this one is in the back, split the next warp. So I'm gonna continue at any point, just you, there's a setting on YouTube, you can slow down the videos. You can also speed them up um, if you're tired of listening to me talk. So if you need to slow this down and watch it go in slow motion. 
So I'm going to just continue across and then I'm going to show you how to add new fabric. See, um, so now as a natural pattern, watch my middle finger here. It naturally is splitting the warp here and giving me that back fabric to bring forward. I instantly just put this middle finger here and bring forward the back fabric. You can buy plush fabric um, at the store, but we have found yard for yard price, it is much, much more economical to buy plush blankets. So this one that I'm working with here had two layers. So it was bonus. I got two strips or two kinds of fabric out of one blanket. So um, it is messy and that's what I said. I do have a sheet underneath me because I don't want to be vacuuming my uh, room every uh, hour. So I'm going to continue across. And now we're down where we just have a little tail here. And I'm going to just give these a little t pull to make sure that I didn't miss any gaps. Push them as far as you can to the top. Now I'm going to take my gray. You lay your pieces right on top of each other. Put, match up your ends, long sides together. Fold it over about an inch and give it a little half inch snip right in the center. Now you lay them end for end and match up that hole. So I have this one coming off of the loom. I have my new one. I'm going to match up the hole. They're both going long ways now. I'm going to take my end piece and bring it through. And you can see all the little fuzzies flying, but I think this is going to be super cool. Okay, so now I can continue across my finger again, creating the hole, folding these together so that the fuzzy side is out. And I missed that one. So there is an example. It wouldn't have been critical, but you do want to uh, make sure your first row gives you a good foundation. So there um, we need to have two strings, the fabric, and two strings. And there goes my finger. And now this knot is just going to be fine. It, it will just weave right in to the rest of the pattern. Okay, so there we have, we're all the way to the cross to the end. We have one more left, so I'm going to go down as normal, and this one only has one string each, which is totally fine. So you're going to come, you're still going to split the difference. Yours might have two strings. If you tied a loop in yours, you probably have two strings there. But I'm going to do the same thing, split so that you have equal strings on each side and I'm going to bring my back string forward. I'm going to take my front one and put it back through the same hole, but this time I'm going to go behind the rod and I'm going to pull it across. So now we have the rod and we're going to do, we just act like this is a warping string. So I am going to take my front one, I'm going to bring it round to the back and bring it in that same hole. Uh, the same hole that was created a second ago and bring that through. The one that's on the back, I bring it around and go to the back of that same hole. Now we have a pattern all the way across. You have four strings between each one and now you just continue and weave your, your strips in between. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and go across and I will do the same motion on the other end so that you can see how it uh, works because that's um, kind of a tricky thing to make sure that you get your mind correct on that. 
So we have a tail here. So now I'm going to take the textured teal and I'm going to add it to the other teal. I lay them with the short ends together, fold it over about an inch, give it a half inch little snip. Again, now we have one going this way. We lay the other one directly on top so they're both going nice and long. Put a finger through the hole that was created and draw the end of your fabric in and just give it a nice pull and so now you have joined your fabric. So this one is on the back and this is on the front and we just switch sides. At this point I can really say I'm glad I made the decision to warp using string. I think it would be way too bulky if I was um, adding some extra fabric in here right now. What I find that my hand automatically does is when I put the back one, I bring it forward and I pull it up. Then I put this one to the back, I bring it forward, and now that one goes up. Sometimes you don't realize what your hands are doing until you stare at them. So I have went across. Each one of these is still four strings between your, your weaving. Now I'm to the end and I have went through my last string and I'm going to, this, this front one needs to go to the back, come around the rod and now it comes to the front. The front one needs to go to the back and go around the rod. So I'm doing random patterns. You can do two blues at the time. On mine, I can do two blues at a time, two grays. It is just going to make a nice random pattern. You can do always a light and a dark. Uh, here's a picture of a uh, rag rug that I've done with a light and a dark at all times. A light being the cream and the dark being the red. Uh, that is a, a good pattern. It gives it a great consistency. Here are some pictures of rugs that I've done that are just random patterns that you can um, just mix up the colors like I'm doing with this plush rug. Uh, just pick whatever color you have available to you. I just always like to make sure that these are nice and tight and so push them up. At some points I sometimes take a measuring tape to make sure they're even all the way down if I'm uh, concerned about it. Okay, I'm continuing across and I pull up the fabric out of the way. This one goes under, up, under, up. Okay, I'm going to go around this rod, um, but I'm going to uh, do it in slow motion uh, on the, the editing. So Okay, I am going to go to work and I'll be back soon. I cannot believe how cool this has come together. I am down to the last row, but before I sit down in my chair and show you how to finish the last row, I was just gonna show you, it does make a mess. This is a blanket, um, as I was saying, and these are the little uh, fuzzies that are everywhere. Look at all of those on the back side of the loom. But the cool thing is, 
uh, the softness. I wish uh, that you guys could feel how soft this uh, rug is going to be because it's one of those plush blankets that I have cut and it is super, super soft. So I'm gonna put the camera back up on the stand and show you how to finish off the rug. This has been one of the fastest uh, weaving projects. I um, actually usually plan on a rug is gonna take five or six nights of sitting and watching TV. This one took about two and a half times. It was really, really fast. So I'm down here to the end. Um, I grabbed a crochet hook so that um, it's gonna make it easier to pull through. There's about, oh, I would say maybe an inch, three quarter of an inch uh, room left here, but everything is so tight. Once I do my last row, everything will just spread it out and it'll make it nice and even. So I'm down here to the end. You're gonna come around just as you have for the last umpteen rows. I'm gonna bring this one forward, but this time I need to bring it between the warping. So this gray is going to come through that warping. Okay, just like that. We're going to pull it between the warping below each nail. If we don't do that, when I take this off of the stand, all of your weaving would just slide right off. So the gray is forward. The blue needs to come around the front and go to the back. So you put your crochet hook in the back and pull it through. So we're going to keep that going across and so I'm going to show you how I actually turn my um, loom. It is much easier for this process if you turn the loom away from you. Okay, so I have the loom turned away from me. The gray is to the front, the blue is to the back. So now the blue has to come forward so you just pull this one through and you can see all the fuzzies come off. Now the gray has to go to the back. So you just put your crochet hook in the back and you pull it to the back. And you just keep this rhythm going all the way across. So now the blue has to go back. I only have a couple left, uh, a couple warps left to go in between. So again, I'm putting my crochet hook in between right below the nail and going to pull the blue and gray to their perspective sides. Now the gray needs to come forward and the blue needs to go to the back. So we're still going to go around the rod. So I'm going to bring the gray around and pull it this way. Now, okay. So I turned the uh, loom back so I could reach it a little bit better. So I have brought the gray back to this side. I'm going to bring it back through that first warp and going to bring it back through the second warp as well, just as like a back stitching on sewing. And now my blue, it needs to come to the front and I'm going to send it back through that first warp and bring it back this first warp here. So I just do a couple warps so that they both end up on the same side, that both of my strings end up on the same side and I just tie a nice tight knot. Um, one knot is fine. So then I am going to hide the tail and make it nice and, and uh, tight. So then I think we should be more than fine. Since I backspaced through the warping and now we can hide a tail in the weaving.
Oh yeah, that looks much better. Mm -hmm. Super. So I'm gonna, while I'm sitting here, I'm just gonna go ahead and snip those off, leaving them a generous uh, half inch for now, and then I can go back and revisit it if I feel like I need to slip stitch these in place while I'm um, doing the backing, that might be a great option. So we are just seconds away from getting this rug off of here. Everything's super nice and tight. <clears throat> so at this point, I'm gonna pull out the rods. And, and just ease it off of your nails. Oh my word, this is so thick. Oh, I wish you guys could feel this. This is super thick and super soft. This is your beginning row. And this is the end that we just fastened off. So you can see your warp strings. But um, just as I had guessed, just by pulling those last rows up, it hides it really quick. It's, it's not even an issue. You can't even see it. Wow, I have done dozens and dozens of rugs and I just have now came to my newest favorite. This thing is so heavy, so um, soft. I just, I think this is crazy cool. So the next step is to uh, put a backing on it. Okay, the last thing we need to do is we need to put a backing on the rug. They are pretty slippery. We have a uh, laminate floor, and so this is my go-to. This is the foam shelf liner. Uh, you can get it on Amazon. You can get it at Walmart. Uh, you just uh, get one. They come in two different widths, and so just find one that is the right width. They have a lot of different lengths. So you just take your backing and lay it. You don't need to go corner to corner. This is just to give it a little bit of a, a cushion. So this is roughly a hand away on all edges. So I am going to cut it a hand away on this edge and just follow one of their lines. then you slip stitch it in place. Then it's best uh, to pin it in a few places. It doesn't need to be super secure. I have taken these on uh, road trips, pin a whole bunch of them ahead of time, and then just slip stitch them while we're driving. In that case, you want them pinned really well. But if you're going to be working on a relatively flat surface, just a pin in each corner. Um, and then one on each long side should be sufficient. Then you just take a needle and thread and start, start slip stitching, which um, is just basically going around and around the edge of your shelf liner and uh, securing the back to your new rug. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this and uh, show you the final product. I have the back uh, sewn on, it goes super fast, it, it uh, is no trouble at all. Um, remember when I finished off the rug, I was concerned about my tails uh, showing. I could have, in retrospect, I was just sitting here thinking, I could have put my backing on this side. Um, but what I am going to do, I am going to push those tails to the other side. So with a needle and thread, I'm just going to secure those tails. On the rag rugs um, that I do, uh, which I have the several videos on the channel, I don't have to do this. They, they uh, blend in real well. But since this blanket is so bulky um, and I wasn't able to do a double knot, this I think is a better solution. Uh, because these rugs are totally washable. Um, I obviously haven't washed this one because I'm sitting here doing it in front of you, but I have washed my other rugs in the wash machine and they do just great. And I would uh, think that this would just help the longevity of the rug. Here it is all done uh, and has the backing on it. My ends are secure. 
I really wish that you guys could touch this. Uh, it is, like my husband said, it's like petting a bunny. This thing is so soft and so thick. I am really excited uh, to uh, start using it. If you have any questions, please leave them below. I do my best to reply to all of the questions. Um, and as always, check back to DIY on the house. I have a whole list of ideas of weaving projects that I can't wait to get started and show you. So thank you so much for joining DIY on the house. Mm -hmm.